What is NASA searching for in the deep ocean? What secret lies 10 kilometers below the ocean surface in the deep water that NASA desperately wants to uncover? Very few people know that just a short distance off the coast of Florida, at a depth of 20 meters, there is the world's only underwater lab called Aquarius Reef. Here, every year, five to six researchers and astronauts from NASA are sent for several weeks for a specific project called Project Nemo, which stands for NASA's Extreme Environment Mission Operations. These scientists are specifically referred to as aquanauts. Not only that, NASA has an autonomous underwater vehicle named which is currently conducting research 10 kilometers deep in the ocean. So, what is a space agency like NASA doing in the depths of the ocean? After all, the U.S. has a separate large organization for ocean research, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So, has NASA found any evidence of alien life forms beneath the ocean? Or is there a major disaster about to happen on Earth that NASA scientists are already aware of? A famous physicist, Edward Bleu, once said something very interesting. Two-thirds of the Earth's surface is covered by ocean water. Yet we know more about the maps of the Moon and Mars and their atmospheres than we do about our oceans. This basically means that reaching the ocean floor and conducting research there is so difficult and knowing this, NASA has set a two-month deadline for this unique marine mission. So, what is going to happen that has forced NASA to set a two-month deadline? Let's understand what exactly is on the minds of NASA scientists and whether we should be concerned about this. Look, in today's era, NASA is planning a very dangerous mission. A mission that I have personally been waiting for six years. You see, in all the species of animals living in the water, about 90% of organisms reside in the sunlight zone. Do you know why such a small part of the vast ocean is the most populated? The main reason is that as you go deeper into the water, the pressure increases significantly. For every 10 meters you go deeper, the water pressure increases by one atmosphere. One atmosphere of pressure is the same pressure that our body feels normally on the ground or you could say in the Earth's atmosphere. Do you remember the tale of the submersible? It was three and a half kilometers below sea level when it imploded and the people inside were completely vaporized in just one millisecond. They didn't feel pain since brain takes 25 millers to register all was destroyed instantly. NASA explores 3x deeper. Before they could even feel anything, everything got destroyed in one stroke. But this depth is getting destroyed three times further than the depth at which Tidal McLeod had happened. Because NASA is planning a large-scale alien exploration mission very soon. It's also in a space object where we found signs of alien life. Let's explore the link between alien missions and Earth's deep sea. So, what is that mission? And exactly where in our solar system is NASA going to search for aliens? Do you know about this? Well, we'll find out about it in just a little while. But before that, first things first, let's understand what connection an alien mission has with the deep sea of Earth. It is possible. You already know that life on Earth began in the deep sea. And this fact is a major proof of concept for NASA. Life needs water, energy, chemistry. We are non-living under nature's laws. In any environment, number one is water, number two is energy, and number three is chemistry. No matter how advanced and intelligent we become, but in the end, we are all just non-living items made up of the same elements and the same laws and forces of nature apply to all of us. There are some specific elements that are absolutely essential for giving birth to life, such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. When they combine with each other, their chemical interactions give birth to life. Simply combining elements make them combine and create life. All will just putting the elements together, make them combine on their own and create life. Think of it this way. If we have tea leaves, sugar, 
and ginger will just putting them together in a pot make tea absolutely not to make tea you need a medium which is water and then you need energy to interact with each other just like we transfer gas derived heat energy to make tea now in the early days of earth these elements also needed water and energy to combine in a specific way which was present in our oceans at that time you might be wondering where energy can be found in such a deep ocean the sun's rays don't reach the deep dark corners of the ocean and on earth every living being primarily depends on the sun for energy depends on energy well there's a common misconception that we can't live without sunlight actually we cannot live without energy and sunlight is just one such source among other energy sources life on earth didn't actually begin with sunlight and that's why nasa is interested in a special zone beneath the ocean where life first originated the dal dapa zone the hadal zone is the deepest part of the ocean that touches the ocean floor in many places it goes down to a depth of 11 kilometers and is filled with dangerous rain here we find hydrothermal vents now hydrothermal vents basically underwater volcanoes when they erupt release boiling water along with minerals and lava steam these are like underwater geysers or hot springs temperature of the water released from there reaches 400 degrees celsius which can even boil away the solid mantle energy that came not from the sun but from the hot core of our earth gave birth to life on earth it was this energy that first created complex biomolecules like proteins and lipids which then gave rise to the first unicellular bacteria and viruses these eventually transformed into multicellular plant and animal species after millions and millions of years of mutations and evolution that's how life began on our earth which has inspired nasa to search for life on other planets as well so now comes the next question what space object has conditions that are very similar to ours mercury is very close to the sun and venus is very close to the sun so we are already studying the mass of std and so far so far no liquid water has been found anywhere and the planets after that are all gas giants there's no solid ground for water there you're right gas giants don't have solid surfaces but their moons are solid one of those moons is a perfect candidate europa which is jupiter's largest moon according to nasa's data it has a hidden salt water ocean that is very similar to our earth's oceans the voyager missions launched in 1979 and the galileo mission in 1995 studied close up images and spectroscopic data of europa it was found that while europa's surface is completely covered in solid ice the strong gravity of jupiter causes the surface of europa to stretch and squeeze this is called pedal flexing now because of this constant nutrient flow the planet's core is active and it generates massive geothermal energy which keeps the water beneath the surface in a liquid state the signatures of its magnetic field have also proven that there is a globally salty water ocean present there interestingly scientists have also calculated that europa's ocean contains twice as much water as earth and even you know like earth europa's core is filled with geothermal energy the composition of their oceans is also very similar and because of this the chances of finding hydrothermal vents here are quite high another study has proven that the fundamental elements that could support the biochemistry of life such as carbon oxygen hydrogen and sulfate are also present in europa's environment and surface composition that's why nasa is sending its space probe here to study it in more detail and to find evidence of alien life now this mission is going to be so amazing that personally as i mentioned i've been waiting for it for 6 years don't think of it as a normal mission it's going to be a grand inspiring mission for all space agencies just to give you an idea let's compare it with our chandrayaan 3 mission which was a successful and highly celebrated mission in that to reach the moon our rocket made five orbits around earth to gain momentum 
through a slingshot effect. But to reach Europa, NASA literally has to play a game of pinball, where the ball bounces around from the sky to the ground using the same strategy. The calculations for the distance to Jupiter's moon, Europa, are almost 1600 times greater than the Chandrayaan-3 lunar mission. For scale, just imagine that if the moon is in the building next to you, the distance to Europa would be approximately like traveling from Mumbai all the way to Delhi. And during this journey, they have to navigate the strong gravity of the massive gas giants, the gravitational interference from their hundreds of moons, and the asteroid belt, which contains millions of space objects, while avoiding their gravitational influence. And not to mention, to escape the sun's gravity and solar winds, this is going to be a super complicated mission. Let me show you a glimpse of it. So, look, the first phase of the Europa mission is the Europa Clipper satellite. The expected timeline is that the Europa Clipper will launch from Earth in just two months, on October 2nd, 2024. Then it will reach Mars, use a slingshot there, and come back towards Earth like a boomerang. After that, it will gain speed using Earth's slingshot towards Jupiter, literally shooting towards Europa like a ping pong ball. And this is just the beginning. Scientists have calculated that the journey from Earth to Europa will take about seven years. Calculating Calculating the present and future position of every planet and space body in this entire time frame, calculating the exact angle from which the spacecraft is to be launched, because the planets and the moon are revolving in their own orbits, so in which direction, and in how much time to reach each stop, NASA calculated and predicted all these things and programmed its mission. The satellite's entry into Europa Moon is cinematic. After nearing Jupiter, Europa Clipper will orbit Europa by flying by Jupiter's largest moons. By 2031, the probe will study Europa's surface and environment, sending data on gravity, temperature, and winds to Earth. Operations will be like a sci-fi movie. Cryo-robots will conduct examinations. When its space journey ends, in 2031, the probe will study Europa's surface and environment. The operations will be sci-fi-like, days after reaching Europa. Cryo-penetrating robots will examine the surface. The probe must penetrate the ice to reach the ocean below. The cryobot will melt ice with nuclear power, deploying micro-robots to search for life. Within a few days of reaching Europa, cryo, robots, ice-penetrating robots will be sent to the surface of Europa to investigate its surface in detail. According to current estimates, there could be a thick layer of ice on Europa, ranging from a minimum of two kilometers to up to 20 kilometers, which the probe will need to penetrate to reach the deep water below. This could take years as the cryobot will melt the ice using nuclear power to reach the depths of the ocean, carrying along eight micro robots that will be deployed down there to explore different areas in search of life. One absolutely right. And if soon we find alien life, then what will its biology be like, just imagine how it would feel. What if we finally find out that we are not alone in this universe? That's a pretty deep and exciting thought, right? In your opinion, what are the chances of finding life in Europa's deep waters? What are the chances that we might discover an alien life form there? Consider how many space agencies have sought alien life for centuries. Europa is nearby. Today, instruments like the Kepler, Hubble, and James Webb Space Telescopes help us search for life evidence, millions of light years away. Sadly, no solid proof of alien life exists yet. We're also studying life's origins as it evolved on Earth. But unfortunately, so far, we haven't found any solid proof of the existence of alien life. We're also trying to study the birth of life in the same way it evolved on Earth. The point is there is no need for other self-replicating complex molecule like DNA. Top scientists unite overcoming differences to turn slim chances into success. This unity is humanity's beauty. We are only searching based on the Earth model, which could be extremely rare. We might just be barking up the wrong tree. But you know what? Even after knowing all this, the best brains and scientists in the world are coming together setting aside their nationalities, colors, castes, religions, and self-doubts, working shoulder to shoulder 
to turn that 1% chance into success. And this is the beauty of humanity. This is humanity at its very core, which has led us to create the most advanced civilization in the world. It's just our curiosity. And we know very well that even if we fail, but such unbelievable missions bring out the best human potential. We humans definitely have a lot of potential, but bringing out that best potential is not an easy task. Such curiosity-driven revolutionary missions give us that existence, that meaning which keeps pushing us forward in making our civilization better. And history is a witness to the fact that whenever a revolutionary mission arises, the science and technology developed for that mission ultimately empower all domains of human civilization. So, with that said, let curiosity be the ultimate driver of your life because there's always so much to learn, so much to explore, and so much to grow.